The regular signing period brought to us our second opportunity to talk to Coach Prime on the record. The first time since his intro press conference, he didn't run down the list of signees, but he did take out some time to, to answer some questions. What were your main takeaways, Brian? Yeah, in fact, quite the opposite of uh, running down the list is he actually started off by saying, don't ask me about specific guys because I don't know who they are. You know, uh, <laughs> that's that's sort of his way. Like, he knows who they are, I think, but, like, he's still getting acquainted. Uh, he, he's different in that regard. But uh, the impressions are that, you know, clearly – um, he's got a staff behind him that he's built that uh, is doing a lot of work and you know putting in a lot of work with this class and um, that it's a lot of this is going to be I'm not saying all of it but a lot of this is going to be the fact that it's Coach Prime right and it's you know his staff is going to bring guys in and say come play for Coach Prime and he's sort of the closer you know and uh, and he did a great job I mean uh, you look at this staff and uh, you know you look and this class is just really above and beyond what we've seen in a very long time around here. Yeah, and, and there's so much excitement already building for the signing period that's going to take place for the class of 2024 because yeah. of this huge elite underclassmen weekend that they had. And it was uncharted territory around here in terms of the caliber of guys to come out here unofficially. Those guys had to pay their way to come out here. Yeah. Uh, but you've got somebody like Corey Phillips, who's the new director of player personnel. He comes from LSU. That's what they do right. every recruiting cycle out there. So right. he, he put himself around guys that he's familiar with, but also some guys, you know, uh, Charles Kelly coming from Alabama yeah. was the number one ranked recruiter in the entire country. Now being in Tuscaloosa helps with that, but right. it's kind of a blend of guys that Coach Prime, like I said, feels comfortable with, but also mm -hmm. some guys that – know how this is played especially the recruiting game at a very high level yeah another one i want to mention is nick williams you know he's a guy that uh you know defensive line coach that um, has been known for his recruiting at georgia and then texas a m so uh so yeah this is kind of how it's played i mean these guys have been at places where this is just what you do and it's, and it's kind of new around here because uh you know those types of kids haven't been coming here and have been wanting to come here and so it's new around here but um you know for for a lot of these guys on the staff this is just what you do and uh this is probably going to be the norm around here as long as uh, coach sanders is here i don't think you could have realistically had higher expectations for this recruiting class especially when you consider the fact that coach prime wanted to stay in Jackson and coach in the Celebration Bowl. Yeah. And there really was not much time between that Celebration Bowl and the early signing period. Right. And now the majority of guys have already signed by then. And, and that's why today was a slower day for the Buffaloes. You know, you, if you can call signing a five-star recruit a, a slow day around here. <laughs> but it, it, to have, as it stands right now, the overall 20th, 21st ranked recruiting class in the country uh, – if you don't, if you're not excited about that, then you're probably just have unrealistic expectations, right? Right. I mean, I think it's probably going to be, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, next year's class. People are already excited about that. Next year, you can probably have those expectations of a top 20 class, uh, maybe a top 15, top 10 type of class. But um, first year, uh, to, <laughs> I mean, he's been here, like you said, for what, seven, eight weeks. And uh, the Celebration Bowl was like six weeks ago. So um, to have the number 21 class, the number four, I think it's number four transfer class, uh, to have that already uh, in less than two months, that's pretty impressive. Who are the guys that, that stand out? We did a video after early, early signing period. We talked about a bunch of guys. And we ended the video, and we looked at each other, and we didn't talk about Jimmy Horn. We didn't talk about – Sedu Treor, they haven't yeah. come out with the pronunciation on him. I might have just butchered it there. But those would have been headliners in, in yeah. previous years. And we went a half an hour and didn't mention them. Uh, they're going to be really good players in this program. Has anything uh, stood out to you since we did that video uh, about a month and a half ago? Well, you know, Sadie Traor is one of the guys that I'm most excited about just because, uh, you know, he's that um, – he's a really intriguing-looking prospect at tight end. And, uh, you know, there was only, I think, six guys in the country that were that played tight end and caught 50 passes last year, and he's one of them. I know it was Arkansas State, but, you know, still – that's 50 passes that you caught um, at, at an FBS school. So um, I'm excited about him because I think he's a different type of athlete than we've seen at tight end. Uh, you know, Jimmy Horn, just stick with the guys we didn't mention. Uh, he, he's an exciting prospect. And um, you look at – he's been showing up a lot in some of the videos that, that have been out there. Uh, the kid loves it here, you know, and it looks like he's, uh, you know, you know, got a good personality and kind of uh, already ingrained himself here in Colorado. Uh, so those guys – and um, I'm really excited about so many of the offensive linemen that they're bringing in. Uh, the competition, 
you know, I look at like Van Wells and uh, Jake Wiley, Jared Christian Lichtenhand, and um, those guys were starters, and they're not going to give up those spots easily. Uh, but I love the fact that there are really experienced guys and, and award-winning guys coming in here to compete with them. And the competition at the O-line, uh, I don't know how to project that offensive line right now, but I know the competition and the talent is going to be better than we've seen in a long time. One guy that has not been announced by CU yet is Demoy Kennedy, former Alabama linebacker, hit the portal in mid-January. He announced on Twitter that he's coming here, but he hasn't signed his financial paperwork here yet, so they right. can't announce him. I'd imagine that will happen pretty soon. Uh, again, a guy that I wouldn't say uh, is in the back burner, but in previous years, that would have been the story for today, and we're about five minutes into this video and finally getting to that. So yeah. it is a whole new world with, with recruiting, yeah. but with him, I, I think you have to be really excited. Yes, he didn't start a ton of games at Alabama, but he had a special teams role, and Charles Kelly comes from Alabama. He was on that defensive staff. He knows what Kennedy is capable of because he's been around him in practice. So yeah. if you're bringing him on board, I'd, I'd imagine that, that Charles Kelly uh, has seen a lot from him in some of those glimpses during his time at Tuscal in Tuscaloosa. Right, for sure. And uh, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that because I'm sitting here thinking, look at the difference from last year to this year in that you know, the transfer that people got most excited about probably was a backup from Alabama. You know, and Tommy Brown was was pretty good for the Buffs last year, but that was sort of the headlining transfer last year. Whereas this year, a backer from Alabama is that kind of like, eh, you know, he's a back burner type of guy, like you mentioned. And not that he can't play, but they've got so many other good players in this class that you know you kind of overlook a uh, you know a backup linebacker from Alabama. But uh, you're right in that if if Charles Kelly wants him here, he clearly can play. You know, and uh, he's going to at least. I think elevate that room at linebacker and you know there's there's some I think there's some good young linebackers that are already here at Colorado you know I love like an Owen Carey guys like that that you know are going to have their opportunity but um, a guy like this you know it just elevates that room and, and elevates the competition you know and and like you said if Charles Kelly likes him he can play. Now Coach Prime said this is just pause because what they're going to do is they're going to go into spring practices which we now know are going to start March 19th they're going to end with the spring showcase on april 22nd call it a spring game that's what it, they're calling it a game for the first time and they have actually got enough guys to maybe split the squad up and actually have some entertainment value with, with this yeah. this game this year there's going to be guys hitting the portal after that we already know yeah. that we don't know you and i were on the phone the other day and i kind of just went down the list and started naming guys off and i wasn't trying to be mean and i'm not going to say them on the video but yeah. there's clearly some guys that probably aren't that, that, that you could take a guess if you're a diehard cu fan right yeah uh what is left then or is it just yet to be determined based on those spring practices backup quarterback is still the question for me unless ryan staub yeah shows as an early enrollee that, hey, I can be a backup from day one, yeah. uh, which you're not going to find out until they start running through these practices. Right. Yeah, that's probably the biggest question for me. And, you know, there's a there's a big opportunity here for a guy like Drew Carter that um, didn't get a whole lot of time with this old coaching staff. But can he elevate himself to the point that he can prove himself to be that capable backup? So there's an opportunity for him and for Ryan Staub. Those are going to be the other two scholarship guys here this spring. Um, I think the rest of the spots is totally up to how this spring shakes out because um, I'm not going to count out any of these guys that – you know, and again, we said some of the same guys on the roster, right? Like, yeah, maybe this guy, this guy. But I'm not going to count out anybody that comes in here, maybe gets inspired by what's going on here and, and works hard and elevates their game. And you, know, you, you see guys that get better throughout college football, you know. And so maybe there's some guys that, you know, are totally off the radar that all of a sudden are looking really good and, and uh, they impress in the spring. So um, I, think, I think that's going to shake down where they actually need some to fill some holes. But right now, I do think probably the biggest hole is that backup quarterback quarterback spot we have ruled out a couple guys early in their career and and they have had an impact it doesn't happen all that often but like Isaiah Lewis is one that never thought he was going to get on the field and then in 2020 was a big part of the reason they won their first four games that year so Akeel Jones Akeel Jones is another one I can't wait to find out who a couple of those guys are because I don't think yeah. there's a story that's going to be more fun to write than the guy that we kind of wrote off, maybe not publicly, but kind yeah. of in our heads, that, that came out here and didn't transfer and then does have a big role. Yeah. I, I do think there's going to be one or two of those guys, and that'll be fun to, to chart this spring. Yeah, and frankly, if, we've, if we're kind of thinking that, most of the fans have done that too. And so, you know, it's going to be those guys like an Isaiah Lewis who played really good football at the end of his career, um, you know, that are going to, 
I, I think, elevate themselves. And, you know, could it be – uh, you know, there was a question asked about running back. You know, how, you know how is um, you know Dylan Edwards going to work with? Uh, I don't know how to say his name. Cavosier Smoke. You know, how are those two guys going to go? But you know, Deion Smith was the leading rusher on this team. I know it wasn't a lot of yards, but you know, does Deion Smith you know have a phenomenal off season and say, you know what, I'm not going to lose this job? And does he come out and all of a sudden he's the guy? So. Um, I mean, that might be one of the, you know, if you look at those candidates, he might be near the top of the list for me because I think there's a lot of talent there. But I think there's going to be, I agree with you, there's going to be one or two guys, two or three guys that are like that that are going to surprise us. All right, spring ball is around the corner. Brian, you, you have anything else uh, to, to share here to kind of close out? Uh, uh, spring ball should be uh, more fun to cover than, than it's been. Uh, there's so many storylines. Usually you get to kind of the end of spring ball and you're starting to run out of stories to, to write. That's not going to be an issue this time around. No, it's not. The question is going to be, you know, what's our access like? You know, because we don't know what it's going to be like as far as what players are available, what coaches are available. I think that for us as media, you know, that's our biggest question right now. But there is no, there's no shortage of stories. It's just a matter of how we get to tell them. All right. It's good to see the excitement out there with Buff Nation as Coach Prime gets ready to start his first set of spring practices here in Boulder.